Hi there. I thought I'd give you a bit of an insight into what's going on in behind the best, behind the scenes inside uh, Compiler Explorer. So I have just had a let me just get pull, get pull, and let's have a look at the log. So here we've just merged in a pull request from Ethan, which adds Risk V support. So let's just have a look at what that looks like. It's just a very simple. Whoops. Let's do head up. Um, just a simple risk v uh, set of options for Clang to support risk v32 sort of out of the box without any funny um, command line settings you need to put in. So I have merged that, and um, I'm going to give a bit of an example about what happens when I get merge a pull request and get it onto the live site. So first thing I'm going to do is have a look at the Travis um, build to make sure that it actually built okay and I have a build. Uh, so yeah, here we go. This is, um, let me zoom this in a bit here. I've got a very big monitor. I'm trying to record this at a decent size so that you can actually see what's going on. Uh, this is the merge coming in. And so this is build 2718 and everything passed, everything's green. I've got a big long list of what on earth, all the tests that run. And then at the very end of the Travis CI, um, the Travis itself uploads a tar -GZ, a tarball, like kind of tar GZ of the um, built package. And that goes onto S3, which is one of Amazon's thingies. Um, I can actually show you where that is uh, over here. Uh, so this is behind the scenes again. I'm going to zoom into 150 and inside my compiler, ignore all the other bits and pieces. Inside dist, Travis, uh, all the different branches are listed here. And then this is where all the tables get put along with a little bit of a text explaining what's going on. So this is how the site knows how to pull down a particular version of all of the code and it's been pre-built and I know everything's working so I can bring up the same version each time. Um, so it's consistent which is great. Now let's get rid of that. Here incidentally you can see the instances that are currently running. Um, I'm in the process of moving from an old admin node to a new admin node. Uh, so the old one is stopped, the new one is running. Um, we recently moved from Ubuntu 16 to Ubuntu 18 across the board and I realized that the uh, admin machine itself hadn't been upgraded, so I did that today. Um, but you can see that I have uh, several prod instances running. This T2 medium is the one that is um, paid for ahead of time. So I pay upfront for this and so this will always be running. And then these two C5.larges here are using the Amazon's spot pricing, which means that um, I bid effectively a price and as long as the current prevailing um, demand is, is low enough, I get two instances uh, running all the time using the C5 large, which is a lot cheaper than reserving it and knowing that it's definitely there. And then I have a beta instance, which is pretty much in the same boat. I also bid for that. Um, and in fact, this beta instance is where we're going to be deploying first. Oh dear, I need to kill off some of these things that are appearing up here. I'm going to just quit that before anything too embarrassing appears. Um, so yes, um, we're going to deploy to beta first of all. So if you haven't been to the beta site, it is at godbolt.org slash beta. And it looks exactly the same as the normal site. And again, I'm going to zoom in and you can see that some interesting things are going on here. It just has beta slapped across here, but um, this is actually hitting that one instance that's running a slightly different version of the code and everything. So first of all, let us log in. Now, the um, I have a command line tool called CE, which lives inside the issues, uh, not issues, excuse me, sorry, everything's an issue at the moment, um, compiler explorer image. Uh, repository. So in fact, let me just log back out again and go up into that Compiler Explorer image. This is another public um, repo. In here is a bin directory where there's a CE uh, administration tool. Um, you need all the privileges and you need all the Amazon stuff to actually be able to do anything meaningful and useful with it, but I have it aliased and I can log into the admin node directly here. So this queries uh, for where the admin node is. And now I'm logged into the administration node and just by uh, convention, I run everything inside a Tmux um, session so that I can have continuity with anyone else who's, who's administrating the site. So now I'm actually logged into that node in Amazon and uh, I have a bunch, I also have CE here and I can run some of the tools here. So this is it by default, it runs in the beta, which is more like a staging instance. And here is a list of all of the um, available versions that have been built by Travis. Those are the things, it's essentially just listing what's in S3. And if we look down here, 2718, was that the right version? 2718, uh, scroll to the top here. 2718, 2718 here is the version I would like to be running right now. So I get to 
uh, incidentally, this thing here tells me which is the current live version running for this particular environment. And again, we're running in beta. So 2718 here, I am going to go CE set current 2718. And that just moves a tag to tell anything that's running as beta that it now should be running version 2718. It hasn't actually changed anything. In order to actually change it, I now need to restart. So I'm going to CE restart, and this is going to cause the nodes to update and recycle and pick up the latest version of the code. So CE restart, and this has an are you sure kind of thing. So I'm going to type beta here. And we now get to watch it um, putting things into standby, updating their code, um, bringing them back out of standby. So at the moment, because there is exactly one instance in beta, if I refresh this page over here, we should probably, oh, not quite yet. But shortly, the load balancer that sits in front of the uh, the uh, Compiler Explorer nodes will notice that this node has gone down and it will stop sending requests to it, at which point it should... Yeah, there we go. Well, now we're starting to see errors here. Now, when I do this for the live site, I do one node at a time. So there's always at least one node up that is able to service requests, um, which hopefully makes it so that you don't see um, an issue while I am updating the service. So in fact, I'm just going to reset the UI here so we don't have this complicated looking code. So we're still waiting. We've got remote compilation failed, error sending requests. Now, if I look back over at EC2 here and refresh, we should see that the beta guy is oh, target groups where are we so beta nodes health checks oh no targets where are we somewhere in here so this guy is now in an initial registration so we've actually got a new cert new instance coming back up which is surprising to me actually uh never mind we can look at the uh, load balancer itself and we can see that um we have no, I'm, I always get confused by this. Somewhere in here, I will be able to see the auto scaling group for beta. Here it is. So this is my spot beta um, group, and you can see that um, the instances have been moved in out of standby by the scripts over here. Um, but more importantly, we can see um, this instance here is healthy and currently protected from scale in. What this means is while I'm updating the service itself, I know that it's going to go unhealthy, but I don't want it to be killed by Amazon's um, scale in, scale out protection. So, uh, sorry, scale in, scale out detection. So at this point, it, this prevents Amazon's system from like whacking this and, and bringing up a new node. So it's going to take it a while because it, it's um, currently restarting and, and, and whatnot. Um, I can show you while I'm here behind the scenes, I use paper trail to augment and pull together all of the um, information from the, the um, all the machines that are running. So if I zoom back in here, somewhere in here, we should be able to see, um, yeah, this looks like the, the dude starting up here. So uh, serving static files from out distance. Is this now? Yes, this is about now. So it, it is now healthy and it looks like it's received a few hits um, and we're just waiting for it to come up and be noticed over here um, to be healthy. So once that's up and running, we know that the beta site has been updated with the latest version of the code. Um, so let's just refresh this. We can see that it's not quite healthy yet. Oh, it is apparently that. Okay, so my script over on this side hasn't noticed yet that it's gone healthy, but we can now see that um, everything looks groovy on this side. And we should, more importantly, be able to see risk V, but which we can't, clang. Oh dear. So that unfortunately means I, I need to go and look as to what happened uh, with this particular update because we're not seeing the new version of the code. So I'm going to do a force refresh just in case that something was cached because unfortunately CloudFront, which I've got running in front of all of the services, is pretty aggressive at caching this stuff. So let's just go risk. No, we're not seeing it. Okay, in which case I'm going to keep on recording and keep on talking about this and we're going to have a little look and see if I can work out what's going on. Now, behind the scenes, um, Compiler Explorer is running on Docker. So we can actually see this unified container here is just the name. If you remember a while back, Compiler Explorer used to have like gcc.godbolt.org and rust.godbolt.org and everything. And so everything, all the different languages that Compiler Explorer um, supported were running in their own separate Docker containers, which is crazy. So I've now unified, unified them with help from, from uh, Ruben and others. Um, and so we only have one Docker instance that's called uh, unified. So somewhere in amongst all this, Craft, when Compiler Explorer starts up, it interrogates all of the compilers, all 200 odd of them, to find out what version they are. And so we can see in here 
a lot of that kind of stuff. So here it is loading all the different compilers. Um, and we can see it posting. Where are we? Oh, so finally the script has noticed incidentally that everything is groovy now with the beta site. So we know that the beta site is absolutely up and, and working, uh, which is great, of course, but it hasn't got the change, or at least the change that we've merged in hasn't seemingly taken effect. That is unfortunate. And I am going to try and use the search in here. We're going to find in here uh, for risk. And we're not finding anything there. I'm using the wrong search bar. That's why I'm going to search for risk. This is one of the things that paper trail is awesome at is allows me to grep through all the, the logs at, at quite some pace, but it's not finding the word. So that is unfortunate. Uh, oh, well, uh, you can see that um, somehow some zania.org, this is a blog post of mine, bizarrely, um, hitting uh, Compiler Explorer, but that's the wrong domain. The mystery is deepen. Okay, well, we're not gonna worry about that right now. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to see login. This is going to let me log into the actual beta node itself that's serving those requests. And um, so now I'm actually logged into one of the instances running Compiler Explorer. And I am now going to, I'm going to do sudo docker ps, just, just sort of show. Oh, I am, let's make this a bit wider there. Okay, so still can't really see what's going on. We've got, uh, this guy here is actually running Compiler Explorer on the unified um, Docker container. We have Nginx, which is working as like the front end to everything, and Logspout, which is reading the um, system logs and it's reading the Docker containers and it's also posting them off to paper trail. So those are the three Docker containers running. So now what I need to do is I need to run inside. Well, first of all, let's do logs of unified. And I'm going to do two and one, pipe less minus R to get the colors all working. And I'm going to go to the end of it here now. So this should, in theory, give me the exact same output that we were seeing over on this side in paper trail. It's just that I'm more familiar with this tooling once I'm here. So let's go and search again for risk. And again, we're not seeing it anywhere. So somewhere along the line, um, this did not work. Um, loads of compilers, no indication. Cool. Uh, I am going to just take one more look at the code. But before that, I'll show you how I would actually uh, debug something that was running inside the container. So I can actually run a command inside the container itself by doing this um, inside unified, and I'm gonna run the command bin bash. So now this is running inside the virtual container that uh, Compiler Explorer itself is running. And if I do PSAUX, you can see that all I can see in here is that node is running, um, we're running some Windows craziness for the Wine support, and um, the the shell is running as well. The 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 run dot sh that is the sort of the the, the top level bootstrap. Now um, this should allow me to look inside and just make sure that we have the right version of the code. So I'm inside a slash a root slash compiler explorer directory. That's where the code has been checked out to. So let's just take a quick look at etc. C plus plus dot Amazon dot properties, and of course I have no tab tab completion. Oh uh, no, because I can't type. Okay, so this is the giant file that was modified in that change list, and we should be able to see in here risk. So yes, compiler.rv32clang.name equals this. Ah, oh, I think I see the problem. Let's have a look. Um, rvc32.clang, rv32clang. We've just got it mentioned, rvclang. So there's a, what's happening here is that a group of compilers called rvclang has been defined. It only has one compiler in it. It, uh, the compiler is this executable here, which we can just check, we can access. Let's just copy that, and then I'm gonna control Z and run that. Now it looks like the terminal's mucked up. Yep, there's definitely a compiler there, so that's great news. It's got a name of risk v 32 clang, and it just gets past these options. All of that makes sense to me. So let's just make sure that, that group is in fact named itself. So rv32 clang, we're gonna search back for and we're going to search for RVC Lang. And it should be being loaded. So there is no obvious indication to me as to why this RVC Lang group of compilers is not being included into the list of um, 
compilers themselves. So that is unfortunate. Um, I'm going to have a no one last look at the the logs here, and we're just going to search for uh, Clang plus plus. So I can see that it is being run twice here. So this is the list of it pulling down all of the compilers, and it's run the trunk trunk uh, Clang trunk bin Clang plus plus compiler twice. Now I I'm guessing um, it should. I was expecting to see it at least twice. Um, once for the x86 version of Clang, where it's not passing minus target risk V um, 32, and then the other time when it's running it again to uh, pass it minus target risk the V32. So let's just go and see if we get two responses back. So gathering from that, gathering from that, gathering from that. So we're seeing it multiple times. So I'm very surprised that it hasn't come up. Um, so the last thing for me to try doing before I give up on this as, as a bad job and at least uh, um, come back to this mystery is just to have a look at what would happen um, if I get API comp uh, compilers um, and now we can look back through this lot here and see if by some miracle the RVC one is in here now these are theoretically RV32 clangs so there it is so it looks like it is actually being um, uh, registered and so uh, the this is me, this 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 uh, query I just did here, and it was just calling straight to the API directly from the horse's mouth to say, hey, what compilers do you support? So I'm betting that really this has all been a wild goose chase. And if I go back over here and I do another force reload in here, eventually this list will be, there we go. Okay, so we've been chasing around about nothing, but at least you've had a chance to see what kind of things go on behind the scenes of Compiler Explorer. And so now I can check that the risk v 32 version does indeed work, and let's do minus O2, make sure that our square routine works, and that's, that's good enough for me. Nothing else seems to be broken. Okay, excellent. That's what all I need, really, to be able to do a full site update, is just a bit of a smoke test to make sure that nothing's going wrong. So on this other con console over here, I'm going to log out, first of all, of the um, uh, the node, the compilation node that I was logged into, and now I'm back on the admin node, and now I'm just going to disconnect the tmux session and leave that logged in. Um, no, I'm not. I need to be there. Gosh, I can't believe I forgot. So the the dash dash mosh here is a habit. I'm actually running this on a laptop, and uh, mosh is an excellent UDP based um, SSH client of a sort that um, is very very um, good at roaming so I can unplug my laptop I can go somewhere else I can be on a completely different network and I can open the lid and I'm still logged into the admin node and everything still works so it's definitely worth checking out so mosh mosh is awesome so let's go back and reattach myself here because what I really want to do now is just remind myself what version I just pushed to beta which was this one here 2718 and now I'm gonna do list except I'm gonna do dash dash m prod and I can see that prod is currently running at 2712 so if I need to roll back I'll roll back to 2712 but now I'm going to tell prod run current set current 2718. Uh, oops, and prod set current 2718. Excellent. And now I'm going to do n prod restart. And this is how we're going to do a site update. So I'm going to hit enter there. And normally I would go onto um, Slack and tell everyone I'm doing this update, but I figured rather than expose the world to all my Slack messages, I'm just going to do it and hope that nobody notices. So I'm going to type the name of the environment prod and hit enter there. And that process we saw happening before will happen, except it happens individual, node by node. And if I go back over to the EC2 management doodad over here, we should be able to see that, first of all, in fact, look, this guy here is entering. So this is the, the spot group. Um, so these are the two nodes that are running with just a bid on them for a price. This guy's entering standby. Um, once he's in standby, he's out of service temporarily. Um, he can be updated, and then once he's up and running and up to speed, we'll add him back into the pool. He'll start serving responses, and we start actually bringing another guy out of um, um, service, and then so on and so forth. So theoretically, if I go back to the non-beta site, nobody should be any the wiser that actually one of the um, systems behind the scenes has just been taken down. Uh, all these things are going on. Uh, with behind the scenes transparently and there's only a couple of minor warts which um, unfortunately have come up since we've moved to uh, a different packaging system but most of the time I can do site, site updates and you don't notice hopefully that is everything's gone done oh what is that warning no new line at end of file how interesting hmm. okay so that's a kind of whistle stop tour of what's going on behind the scenes at Com uh, Compiler Explorer uh, there is a bunch of uh, things going on 
as I say, behind the scenes, we've got um, all of this stuff that has taken me many years to learn, and certainly the the finesse and the subtleties of of uh, managing a fleet of machines running somewhat reliably um, have been an interesting learning curve. I hope this video has been interesting for you, and um, please do let me know in the comments if these things are uh, are unclear. I'd be happy to help. This is really only of any use to people who are administrating Compiler Explorer, um, and most of those guys know and go how um how this stuff is done already but maybe they'll learn something from at least seeing how i do this it's a bit of an experimental video i had half an hour spare and i thought well why not up do a site update and record it hopefully it comes out okay as i say leave me comments um and subscribe to the the channel and maybe i'll do some more of these showing how i sort of add new features or debug problems with with compiler explorer but thanks for watching